Hiya guys and welcome back to Age Workshop and this is going to be another episode of building the Stuart S50 uh, model steam engine. So we've pretty much completed the base and we need to move on to making some of the other bits and bobs. So I think we'll do a simple little part today, we're going to do the valve eccentric. So I'll show you the material supplied, uh, we'll have a quick look at it, I'll look at a few sketches, um, show you the drawing and we'll jump to the lathe and get on with it. So this is the part here. As you can see, it's a circular part, so it's going to be done in the lathe. It's got an offset boss on one side with a quarter hole, a quarter reamed hole for the crankshaft to go through. And it's got an undercut in the centre. I think that's probably oil relief, something like that. And the eccentric strap runs around the outside of it. So as it rotates about this point, obviously the lobe goes up and down and it makes the eccentric push and pull, which moves the valve in the cylinder. So, um, again, all metric si uh, imperial sizes. Tricky one's probably this 1 16th undercut smack in the middle of there. Um, my parting tool is 1.5 mil, and that's as near as damn it, 16th, so I think we're going to go with that. Um, it doesn't show a fillet radius in the corner there, we're between the two diameters. Um, yeah, I might use uh, a tip with a small radius on uh, for that rather than my normal aluminium tips, just to put a fillet radius in the corner there. Um, doesn't show any chamfers, but we will be breaking the edges with chamfers. And yeah, let's jump to the lathe and get on with it. Just as a little point of interest, uh, the piece of material they've supplied in the kit, 5.8 uh, is supposed to be, we're in Imperial. And it's showing up a 6.2, uh, let me get in shot if I can. Slightly undersized already, 6.23. Um, I think we'll clock it up in the four jaw. And probably take a scratch pass off the top of that just to ensure it's round. Um, and then when we come to do the hole in the eccentric strap, we'll make it to suit whatever the uh, eccentric turns out to be. So I got about five eighths of an inch of that bit of stock hanging out the chuck. Um, I just clocked it up, you know, within a thou. Nothing uh, drastic because I'm going to machine the outside, even though it's already undersized. I don't know what sort of material this is, we're about to find out. Seems fairly free cutting. Just thought I'd start off slow. Here we are, let's try that about 750. Two looks good for centre. Okay, I'll just set a zero there. Um, hold on, we're in metric. <laughs> now we're in imperial. So I'm just going to touch off on the OD. Maybe take a foul, see if that cleans up. Um, my noisy power feed, I'm afraid, guys. Which is going the wrong way. <laughs> a little bit of cutting oil, see if that helps anything. So yeah, it seems to have cleaned up all the way around. I'm going to call that the finishing cut on the OD, the, the nominal 5 eighths. As we said earlier, hold on, let's turn that off. As I said earlier on, um, we're going to make the eccentric strap to suit this. In fact, I may take another pass. I think I'm running way too slow for that material. Let's just see. Put a cut on. That's just whispering off there. Just a better finish. Okay, so in one foul swoop, that's the OD done and it's faced. So I need a distance now, I think while it's still central, to put the undercut in. So 
I'm going to change to the parting tool, which I know is the right width. I'm going to touch on that base, set a zero, just wind out. I'm going to see what the dimension of the back of the groove is from the front face. So I'm going to refer back to the drawing and work that out. So I just did a bit of working out um, with the aid of a calculator. Right, from the front face, 297 thou. That's still reading zero, good. And the depth from touch off is 47 thou. That's the reading on my uh, DRO. So, 297. There we are on the DRO. Okay, so I need to get a touch off now. Just slow that down. See where my touch off occurs. There. Okay. So parting operation. 47 foot deep. We might get a bit of chatter here. Okay, we may have raised a little burr on those edges, so we will go into those corners, I think, and just do a tiny little scratch on the top bases of that undercut. Okay, I think I'll do a tiny little scratch with a uh, chamfering tool. If I get in there. I'm just going to take the chamfering tool into the groove without touching anything, without hitting the base, and I'm just going to speed up a touch. I'm going to walk it left and right, just taking the that's that one, that's that one, taking the corners off. Feels better already. I can't even see that chamfer, but I know it's there. Okay. Um, next thing to do is offset it. So I need to get the clock out. So the offset we're looking for is 94 thou. So I'll just bring the clock central over the part. There we are. So, yeah, it's not on a great reading. So I'm going to loosen off one jaw. I'll probably do this top one. I'm just going to loosen that off. Maybe a quarter turn, maybe a bit more. Go to his opposite number, and I'm going to tighten him up, basically knocking it off centre. Let's see where we are. 33. Oh, that's close, isn't it? <laughs> that's uh, about 85, though. That's the high point. So I need a lower point to be lower. So I'll just tighten up that opposite draw a bit more. Let's try and get to some round figures so we can see where we're going. Tell you what we'll do. We'll find the low or the lowest point. There. And I'll just reset the clock to a a zero. Oops. Clock's on the move here. Let me just get a zero. Right, okay. So the highest point we're looking for 94 thou. We got about 98. So I just need to tighten that jaw down a bit. That's a little bit too much. Still loose, actually. So we're going from one, or is it two? You can see the clock better than me. Two, so we'll want to go around to 96. That's close. 
Just going to check these jaws are tight. We'll have another look at this. Two, lowest point. So we want 96. I'm not going to argue with that. 96. Two. 94 thou in my book. Okay. Of course, I do have to be using an imperial clock. <laughs> right. We're going for it. So we'll turn the offset boss first. So let's just touch on the end of there. Give myself a zero. And come off. Um, distance back to the shoulder. Let me have a look at my sketch. Is 0 0.156. 156 thou. And the diameter is 437 and a half. So, um, as you can see, there's the offset, it's throwing. Now I'm going to have an intermittent cut here. And I know that it's going to clean up and some when it's finished on diameter. So I can basically, if I just uh, come across this space, see, here we go. I'm going to come to about 150 mil back, 150 thou back. At least six thou for the finish. There's 150. So I'm going to progressively take more and more of that diameter. Till it cleans up. Then we'll have a measure. That's cleaned up now. You think it has? It has. Just. So down at a four three seven and a half. Imperial mic. We're all right. We're up in the five hundreds. Uh, where are we? Five seventeen. So 80 thou to come off. Be about 40 thou aside. I'm going to set a zero. Take 30 thou aside. Well, not all in one cut. We'll have another measure. Taking 10 thou cuts here. Probably run a bit faster than this. Okay, that's 30 thou side. Obviously, tiny little lathe like this, I can feel it shaking with the offset. It's about as fast as I can go without it jumping all around the workshop. One, uh, four, three, seven and a half. Back in with a mic. Yeah, it feels good. Uh, four, fifty five. So that's eighteen thou left. I'm going to take five thou aside and have another measure. Should be eight thou left then. Okay, four, three, seven and a half. What have I got? 425, 444. So yeah, approximately 8 thou. 
fourth hour side. There. Let's do it. Hand feeding this. Into my 150, back out. Gonna set a zero on depth there. Gonna wind out. The distance was 156. So I'm gonna do a 153 and then 156 into that zero I just turned. Flanking the shoulder basically. Into my zero. Now 156, that's 157, 8156, there we go, and just skim that face. Into zero, back out. Okay, so that's the eccentric done to diameter and length. Um, while we got it in this position, I must, I will shampoo the end of that now, while I remember, while it's offset. Um, and obviously I've got to drill and ream the quarter hole. So let's just shampoo this face. It doesn't call for it on the drawing, but, uh, well, you know. Ooh, I don't want to catch that blank. It's in fresh air. No reason it can't have a, you know, 10 thou shampoo or something like that. Right, so, centre drill. How fast can I run? Mm, that's about it, really. What am I doing? 800 RPM. Can't go much faster, the leaves start to wobble. Go that deep with the center drill, it's only a six mil hole going in there. Okay, so there's the center drill in the offset. So, drilling some holes now, um, going in with a 5.5 mil drill. I think I need to go in. What is the depth of this? Um, it's three eighths overall. I'm probably going to go in about yeah, three eighths is 10 mil. Probably going to drill in about 15 mil to allow the reamer to go deep enough. Maybe a little more. I've already lost count of how many turns I've done on my hand wheel. <laughs> does help when you tighten up the lever. Give that a little clean. Another count now. From here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 16, there we go, 17, that should be more than enough. So that's that drill in, that was a 5.5 drill. Um, I'm going to go in with a 6.1 now, and that will leave roughly 0.25 for the reamer. Quarter reamer, quarter being 6.35. That's just whispering out of there. All the way to a stop. There we go. And 
we'll swap over for the Rima. Okay, quarter Rima is at the ready. Same one I used for the uh, bearings in, in the base block. Quarter Rima's in place. Slow proceedings down. What are we running at? Three twenty. See if the torque can handle it. Seems okay. Wonder what that uh, offset is doing to the image stabilization on my camera. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Okay, that's the whole range. I think we'll have a little chamfer on that hole. Let's see if I can find my chamfer a bit. Uh, which drawer? That drawer. Do it. A little uh, little chamfer in bit. Just a deeper the leading edge of that hole. While it's offset. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Right, so I need to put it back on center now which is basically just a clocking job on this diameter here and then i can um shampoo the leading edge of this sort of cam shall we call it and pass it off so clocked back up i'm just going to catch the leading edge come into here somewhere without catching the offset put a little chamfer on there okay so we're now ready to part off okie dokie back up with a parting tool line it up on the front and the overall thickness is three eighths of an inch That's it, lined up on the leading edge, um, set a zero, come back out the way. Three, seven, five. Um, I think I'm gonna leave 10 tau on here um, and that'll allow me to uh, face it and chamfer it afterwards. So we're gonna go to 385, lock it there, part it off. Um, I had a bit of chattering when I was doing that groove. I'm a bit closer to the chuck now, it might not be quite so bad. Let's see how we get on. Of course I'm going to be parting through the offset. That's a lot better. A bit closer to the chuck. Probably hitting that hole now, yes. Just taking it gently so it doesn't dive in. Any second now. There she goes. Okay. So that's that parted off. And there she blows. I um, wonder what trick I can come up with to uh, face the underside of that and put a chamfer on it. Hmm. So purely for a bit of fun, guys. Um, 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> how many times when I used to be doing a lot of milling on the lathe did you hear me say, oh, one day when I get a mill I'll probably end up turning on it? Well, I was about to put the collet chuck up in the lathe, take it out the mill, and I thought, well, why don't I just bring the lathe tool to the collet chuck? There we go. Using the power feed, and I'm facing it off to size. I measured it up first, and there's about 20 thou to come off. So I'm taking a uh, fourth thou and a pass. Let's just go back across. Okay. So yeah, uh, <laughs> now I'm turning on the mill. I'm running the tool just below centre, um, so that you can see it. I'm running in reverse, and I put it that way round. But as you can see, it's facing off lovely. And of course, job wouldn't be right with a chamfer, or without a chamfer. So I've got the dowel, or the uh, 250 thou gauge uh, rod, or what's going to be the crank, through the hole in the centre of the eccentric. Now the drawing shows for the grub screw to be opposite the high point or down in from the high side of the cam. So, hold on, vice a little tight. So if I just rotate, you can see the needle dropping off the high and low point there. Let me just move my dowel back straight into the center okay so I'm pushing down on the on the pin to keep the part down square I've just rotated it on the dowel to find the high point and I'm just going to nip it in that vice it's only a very small operation we're doing here just pull that out and there we are, that's the part orientated rotationally the right way. So that's a start. Um, so we just got to pick up off this edge and edge find the two sides of the boss. Find the centre. Bob's your uncle, we're there, grub screw, 7BA. So use an edge finder, picked up left and right, split it, found the centre. And then I picked up this front face. And I've stepped back 78 thou, which is half of the thickness of the wall. It doesn't show it on the drawing, but it shows the grub screw as being in the centre of this little boss. So that's where I put it. Um, right, so we need to drill and tap now for 7BA. So I'm going to get a tiny little centre drill out. With a 1mm pilot on it, that's the boy. Let's see if I can find the middle of the uh, truck for a change. Looks good. I'm running backwards. Oh yes. I was doing a little job the other day which involved running the cutter backwards. So. So tap and drill for 7BA, 2.05 millimetres, or a number drill, uh, number 46. So <laughs> I went out, bit the bullet, and I bought a set of number drills. So number 46, there she blows, 2.05. So that's the one we're going to be using. Let's just put those away. Put up the one side and a little bit of fluid. What are we running at? Twelve hundred, nearly thirteen.
and through into the bowl. Okay, so next up, tap it 7BA. So, using my little uh, tapping button, the spring loaded center. Just uh, very gingerly. Ooh. Making sure I retract it fairly often, pretty much every cut. I'm just going to take that out of there. Clear the swarf from the tap. In fact, it definitely, uh, you can feel how much tighter it is using that number drill to when you use the uh, a 2.1 let's just get back into where we were just using the lightest of turns there's no friction in my fingers on there at all just to get it started a little bit more oil in there getting there now and we are through through the other side just bringing most of the way out with the guide still in place can feel it tightening up now and that's it 7BA hole in there there we are guys, that's the uh, eccentric completed on the shafts and it's going to live in a place here with a little tap hole. Um, that's pretty much completed. I think, uh, well, we'll see where we go next, but I have got another little project I've got to fit in um, while I'm doing this. So um, the parts on this might come to a stop for a little while while I do this other project, which is obviously got some urgency. This is just for fun. Um, so I'll show you the materials that are come in. So I've got a piece of 25 by 10 mil 316 stainless, a piece of 8 mil 316 stainless rod, and a good chunk of, I believe, 70 by 25 aluminium. Um, there's about 800 mil of that. And that's going to be the materials that I'm going to be using for a little project that I'm going to be doing for basically my nephew, my niece's husband. Um, so it's going to be a set of hinges and it's going to be in a basically around a swimming pool which has chlorine and what have you so it needs to be 316 um, rather than normal 304 I'd standard, normally use of stainless so that's going to be interesting it's going to be a set of hinges for a specific part of a pool cover um, but anyway that's where we're going next well there we are I think that's it for this one guys Thank you for watching as always. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.